Hey YouTube, in this episode I'm going to build a Sabiki rider out of PVC pipe. I've seen a few other videos on this and I wanted to do it just to see how well it works. Now from the other videos, the whole purpose of doing the Sabiki rig out of PVC pipe as a DIY project is to do it cheaply. So I went down to the hardware and have it around. I could get a full length of PVC pipe and cut one length of it, but it was cheaper to buy two short lengths and a joiner rather than buy a full length and waste a fair bit of it. Using a joiner has an added bonus that will allow me to disassemble the rod and store it in a smaller space. It makes sense that way. I bought an end cap for it as well, just to close off the butt end of the rod. That's a really tight slip fit, so it won't need any glue to hold it on. Now I bought the cheapest reel I could find to go with it. It's a uh, Jarvis Walker Scorpion. $18 for the reel and about $4 for the PVC pipe. So under $25 for the whole rig. So all that remains to be done now is to assemble these bits and pieces into a Sabiki rig and see how well it works. Now the reel's nothing to write home about. As I said, it's a Jarvis Walker. It's a Scorpion. It's a bottom of the range of the spec. I went into Kmart and I bought the cheapest reel that I could see. Sort of reel you might put on a kid's first rod. It even says on the packaging that there's only one bearing in there, although it does also say that it has a brass pinion gear and a stainless steel shaft. But anyway, you look at it, you've got to say that this reel is made to a cost and not to a quality. On the other hand, there's nothing flash about the job I needed to do either. It has to lower a sabiki rig to the bottom and wind it back up again. So that shouldn't be too demanding a task for it. As usual with these sort of reels, the handle either folds up or comes off all together so that they can pack it into a smaller box. In this case it folds and you tighten the knob on the other side to lock it into position. It actually feels a lot better than I expected to use it. It's even got a drag and the drag doesn't feel too bad for the price either. Now the next thing to do is to figure out whereabouts along the rod you want to position the reel so that it's comfortable for you to use. And this spot's pretty comfortable for me. So I'll just sit this down and go and get a pen which I forgot to get before I started so that I can mark where I want to position this reel. And the next thing to do is to figure out where the line needs to go into the centre of the PVC pipe. And we want to judge this as not being too much of an angle on the position of the reel. We don't want it dragging too heavily on the hole that we drill there and go into the pipe. I'm just doing a bit of an eyeball uh, estimate, so I'll get a tape and measure it, just so I can assign a value to it for you. When I got back to the tape and measured it, I found that I had eyeballed it at about 10 inches, which is about 25 centimetres. But looking at it with the tape, I decided that wasn't enough, and I moved it to 15 inches, which is about 38 centimetres. As it turns out, uh, 10 inches would have been fine for it, and I think that would have been the preferred measurement, but it didn't make any difference to the operation of the rod, as I'll discuss later. Now I've got to drill the hole the line to pass through. I've got my Dremel tool here, and I'm going to start by drilling the hole straight in where I've marked it. Now that I've got the hole drilled straight in, I'm going to change the bit out for a router bit, which has a cutting edge on the side of the bit, and that's going to allow me to elongate the hole and slope it in on the right angle. So looking at it back this way, where the reel is, look at the angle that the line comes in, you want to put your router bit in, straight in on the hole, and then rotate it to the same angle as the line, or at least approximately the same angle as the line comes in on. And when you're finished, you want to make sure there's no sharp edges on the PVC to cut into the line. If necessary, get a rat tail file and smooth them off. In the video, I'm just using a little grinding attachment on the Dremel to go through and smooth off the sharp edges. As I said, if you don't have a Dremel, you can do this with a drill. You can do it with a hand drill and a rat tail file. Well, the next step is to go and get some zip ties and attach the reel. In putting this reel on, I just want to make sure that I get it lined up with the hole that I drilled in for the line to go through. Well, that zip tie certainly wasn't as strong as I thought he was. Now, I want to get this reel attached well enough so that it will withstand a reasonable amount of abuse without falling off. If that's not enough, then what I'll do is I'll put a little bead of elastic underneath the seat of the reel and put the cable ties back on to hold it in place. 
because Celastic is one of the best glues I've come across for this sort of join and it's still soft and flexible enough that you can get it off if you have to without doing any real damage. Now that that's on, we'll bump this on. Oh, okay, looks like I'll have to get the Celastic after all because that did move when I tried to bounce it. Yeah, definitely have to get this plastic on board. The other thing you could do is get a piece of pipe that slid over that and make a piece like on a normal rod where you glue in the front piece and slide this in under it and then come up from the back and pin it maybe to stop it coming off. That would be another way of doing it. For what I want, this will work. It just needs a little bit more effort on it. come off the back there. I've pressed that all the way in at the uh, front. The pipe's going all the way up to the ridge around the centre. So that's fully pressed in. I can't, oh, I can just barely twist it on there. So I think that'll be all right for the sort of use it's intended. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to flare the top end of this a little bit so that the sabiki hooks don't get caught on it. And I've got an idea of doing that, so I'll take the camera down to the shed and get that done. All right, I'll get this reel fixed up with some elastic on it now. First thing to do is to gently cut the zip ties that are holding it on at the moment. Then I want to get some new zip ties prepared so that once I get this elastic on, I can zip tie the reel on quickly or at least easily because I don't want to be mucking around trying to get zip ties ready while the elastic's there and end up getting elastic on the dining room table. That wouldn't make me very popular at all. Now we want to be very sparing with the elastic here. We just want enough on to fill any gaps between the real seat and the PVC pipe. Don't want it oozing out everywhere. Oops, I didn't practice what I preached there. That is way more elastic than I need and it's going to ooze out everywhere. So I better get something to mop the mess up. Well, I've got him all cleaned up. I've got a couple of zip ties on him and I've got him sitting over the back of two chairs. The hole in the rod where the line goes through is at the bottom and the reel is hanging down like a pendulum to make sure it stays facing that way. I'm going to leave it sit there overnight for the elastic to dry and then in the morning I'll put a couple more zip ties on it and finish the job. Well the elastic set overnight and that reel's not going to be going anywhere. There's a little bit more of the elastic has oozed out overnight. I'll just get a knife and trim that up very gently. Neatness counts. And then I'll put another couple of zip ties on it just to make sure that it's well and truly secure. Now that should be comfortable enough to hold. If the sharp corners on the zip ties give me any grief, I can wrap a bit of duct tape around that. You know what they say about duct tape. If duct tape won't fix it, then it's beyond repair. I think it's about time to start poking some line through the centre of the rod now and finishing the job. Now I was brought up using the old LB side mask reels. I've only been using these egg beaters for the last couple of years and one of my favourite tricks in putting the one on is to forget to thread the line under the bail arm before I thread it through all the eyes or in this case through the centre of the PPC pipe. So first thing to do is to make sure it's under the bail arm. While feeding the line through this short section was pretty easy. It's a thin line but it's only a short section and I managed to get it through just fine. But I think I'll need some weight on the line to get it through the longer section. Well, I found a sinker that I could tie under the end to use to drop that through. A little bit of weight does wonders and gravity does the rest. Now the next thing to do is to get a sabiki rig on there and a sinker. Uh, a sinker that's usable with a sabiki rig that is, not the one I just used to get the line through. This signature sabiki rig arrived for me both day. It's got six hooks on it, they're size six, and the main line is 0.35 and the branch lines are 0.4. There's a bit of a trick for getting these sabiki rigs out and getting them on without ending up in a massive tangle. 
So it's not that hard once you know how. I'll do a video at some stage to show you how to do that. In the meantime, I just want to get it on and try this rod out. Now I picked this star sinker to put on the end of it. It's got a ring in there to tie on to. I'll put a quick attach on there so I can change it. I picked the star sinker because it's the lightest sinker that I have that's still too big to go into the tube. The whole idea is to have the sinker stop on the outside of the tube so that the hooks are inside the tube, out of harm's way where no one's going to get jagged on them, and the sinker just stops the line from disappearing down the tube. I hope it works. I'll find out soon. Now I'm going to leave the sabiki on the paper. Now if I've got an end out, I'll just tie the swivel onto that. And I'm not going to take it off the paper until I'm ready to start winding it into the rod. That will help stop it from tangling. Just a simple uni knife, and because it's so fine, I'm going around about a dozen times. A little bit of lubrication on it, and pull them in tight. Now I can take the sabiki off the cardboard and gently put it in the rod so that it doesn't tangle on the way. Hopefully. Okay, now I've just got to put a mustad fast hatch on the end of the line and I'll be able to attach the sinker to that. There we go, that's got him finished. Well, it sort of works. I had hoped the sabiki rig would be entirely within the tube when it was wound up, but it's a little bit long for that. I didn't have the sabiki rig when I measured the tube out and set it all up. So I didn't know how long it was. I've mismeasured a little bit. It's an easy fix. I can just add six inches onto the end of it. I'll test the rod out first and make sure I'm happy with it. If I am, I'll add a bit onto the end of it and that will fix that issue. Well, my boat's too small for the focal length of my camera, so I didn't manage to get any decent video of the actual sea trials on the Sabiki rig, but I can tell you about it. I wasn't happy. The concept's okay, but I just found the rod itself was uncomfortable to use. There's too much flex in the PVC pipe. I just found it sort of spongy to use. It just didn't feel right, so I'm going to scrap it. it look, it'll work, but it's not a pleasant rod to use. I'm going to buy a proper suit. Uh, fiberglass sabiki rod and I'll use that. I'll give you a report on that later on. If you're desperate, go ahead and make one out of PVC pipe, but you know, really for 60 bucks, buy a fiberglass one. I think you'll be much happier with it. Well, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I do hope you got something out of it. If you do want to make your own sabiki rig, this might give you a few pointers as to the pitfalls of it. Perhaps you can pick some better PVC that's not as flexible, that might work out better for you. If you enjoyed the video, you can find more of my videos on my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the like button. Click on subscribe and tick that bell icon if you'd like to see more of my videos. Until next time, good fishing.